Color correction and color grading are not the same thing. Color correction is the process of adjusting your video clips so that they look like what you filmed and so that they all look consistent. Color grading is the process of adding a certain look or a vibe or a feel to your clips. I'm gonna start by showing you some basic color correction in CapCut and we'll finish up with some color grading tips that I think you're gonna love, including one that I'll bet you haven't seen yet. There's a link in the description for all of the elements we use in this video and you can use them wherever you want. They're pretty cool, so you wanna just go ahead and do that right now. What, what, are you, what are you waiting for? While you're at it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and leave a comment if you want me to keep making these videos. They actually take a long time, so if you like them, just let me know and I'll keep making them. First, I'm gonna drop these three sailing clips into the timeline. I'm gonna hit Shift Z so they fill up the timeline down here. We're not gonna use any of this audio, so I have them all highlighted. I'm gonna jump up to audio and just drag this volume slider all the way down. And when I drag it, I want you to notice that all of these levels go down into nothing. To begin adjusting the clips, we just jump up here to this window and click on adjustment. Then we make sure that the clip we wanna modify is highlighted, which is this first one, position it on a frame that's kind of indicative of the rest of the video. That works great there. And then I scroll down here in adjustment, basic, down to adjustment. And it gives us the basic sliders that we'll have in any video editing program or in any photo application like Photoshop. The first thing we wanna mess with is the color temperature. That's how blue or how warm, how cool or warm it is. And to make it cooler, we slide to the left. And to make it warmer, we slide to the right. And you can do what you want, it's YouTube. But if we want it to be accurate, there's a way to check that right here in CapCut. You just click on these three little lines here and you have the option to see a color oscilloscope. We just hit turn on. The only one we're gonna worry about right now is this one on the far left where we can see red, green, and blue. And what we want is for the tops of all of these to be at the same level. Here we can see that the red one is much higher than the others. So what do you do? You just drag the slider to the left and make it even like that. And we can see that right now the blue and the red are pretty close, but the green's down there. So we just go down to this hue slider, we just drag this slider to the left a tiny bit, and bam, those are all pretty even. So that's pretty accurate color-wise. Let me just close this window. We're not gonna worry about it for the rest of this tutorial. You don't have to use the oscilloscopes, but if you're not sure where the color level should be, it's super helpful. And the goal is to make whites look white and blues look blues and orange look oranges to make it accurate. Next, we have saturation to either make the video less saturated and we can go full black and white or way saturated all the way to the right. Personally, I like my colors more saturated, but not too obnoxious. So for me, somewhere in here is pretty great. And then usually I don't mess with the brightness because it just kind of tends to degrade the image, but it can help depending on what your image looks like. Adjusting the contrast to the left makes the image very flat like that, almost gray, and to the right, it's super contrasty and you lose a lot of detail when you do that. The default for someone might be to go to, oh, let's go all the way contrasty because the colors really pop, but then you just lose all this detail. There's like no details here, there's no details here, and it's just not a pleasant image. So I usually, you know, I might adjust that a tiny bit. One thing that I do a lot is mess with the highlights and shadows. The highlights are the brights, not totally white, but the brighter colors and shadows are the shadows, not blacks, but just above black. And the reason I mess with these is because often cameras don't have enough dynamic range, the ability to pick up all the shades of black and all the shades of white. You know, with limited dynamic range, you just have black and white. And with lots of dynamic range, you have a lot more grays and whites. So because cameras aren't always great with that, you can modify it a little bit in post and with better cameras, you do have more latitude, more dynamic range. And we adjust these so that we get more detail in the image. So if we adjust the highlights down to the left and lower them, we're getting a little more detail here in the clouds. If we go all the way to the right, you know, the detail just evaporates completely and it just gets all washed out. So I usually take the highlights down, especially if there's a sky in the image and the shadows I might often take up a little bit and I do that so I can get a little more detail. Now there's not enough data here to get detail in, in this sail cover here, but we can adjust it a little bit and bring in a little more detail here. And what that also does it allows us to make the whites pop a little bit. It just gave us more latitude to work with the whites. So just slide this white slider to the right a little bit and this white gets a little bit whiter and brighter and the blacks, we want the actual blacks to be black, black. And so we just drag that down and it gives us a little more punch, more contrast. For reference, here's what the image looked like before color correction, bam. And then after, 
it's a much more pleasant image. Now, there are a lot more things we can do. Illumination kind of adds a light to the image. I don't usually mess with this, but just so you can see what it does, it kind of brightens it up and lowers it like that. It works similar to, but different than the brightness slider. And then we can sharpen it and make it a little more focused so there's a little more detail to show up. But if I drag it all the way to the right, you can see here where there's a lot of detail that pops up. Sliding clarity to the right makes things a little bit more defined. You know, if I go all the way to the right, you can see, oh, it's pretty defined, but it's kind of too harsh. So I don't usually mess with that. Particles gives you a look like that. So it looks like it's film. And if you're going for a film look, that's kind of cool. You can leave a little on there. Fade just fades the image out and makes it less contrasty. It kind of puts a almost like a layer of gray over it. And vignette, if you go to the left, you get a white vignette. To the right, you get a, a black vignette. And that actually looks kind of cool. It just draws a little more attention to the, the sun in the center. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of vignette on there. And next, we have HSL. That stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance, or Brightness. This allows us to modify specific colors. It only gives us eight colors to mess with, but just to show you what it does, the sun is pretty vibrant here, so we could mess with the orange and maybe make the sun a little more saturated without messing with the other colors. So we can just drag it up and like, oh, the sun's a little more saturated. I know the water here looks kind of blue, but it's actually more of a gray, so we can adjust the blue a tiny bit and try to saturate it a little more, and it's not really gonna do do too much, so I'm not gonna mess with that. And we could maybe darken a little more to make it a little more ominous. But again, because it's not really a true blue, not much is happening. We can also change the hue of the blue to make it a little bluer or make it a little purpler. We're just gonna leave these here. Um, there's another image after this where I can show you a little better. In fact, let's just look at that real quickly while we're in this mode. So the only thing with a lot of color here are my swim trunks. And if I'm clicked on red, I can make those swim trunks like pop and look ridiculous. Or I can just make them not stand out as much and just take it down there and make it a little darker so they don't distract from the rest of the image. So these are actually useful if you want one color to pop quite a bit. The last tab we're going to talk about here in the adjustment panel is the curves tab. And curves gives us four curves. We have luminance, brightness, red, green, and blue. These are allowing us to do similar things to what we've already done, but they give us more extreme control. So we're basically doing the same things we did in adjustment, but with curves. And it looks like, oh no, it's, it's so confusing and fancy, and what do I do? I almost never mess with the colored ones, but I do mess with the luminance or the brightness one. The top of the brightness curves is white, the bottom is black. So if I drag the left handle all the way up, everything goes white. And if I drag the right handle all the way down, everything goes black or very close to it. What is very common to do with this is to add a slight S curve. So right here, we make a slight S, not a big one. And that will give us a little bit of contrast. And I usually go right around where these lines intersect here and I'll add a beat, they call it. And I'll add another one down here. And I'll just lift this guy up a tiny bit and this guy down a tiny bit. And it adds just a little more pop to the image. That's something that is very common. That's the most basic thing you do with curves like that. And if you turn it off, it looks like that on. I think it looks better. We're just going to leave it. We also have color wheels, which is a pro feature and it is more advanced. So we're not going to mess with that in this tutorial. Remember the goal with color correction is to make the video look like what you actually filmed and to make all of the clips uniform and consistent. This clip was filmed a little bit later than the first clip, so it doesn't really match. I'm just going to color correct it slightly to make it match a little more and do the same thing with that one. If you'd taken my course, Edit with Treb and Master CapCut, you already know about color correction and color grading. In fact, you know a whole bunch of stuff, so you wouldn't have to keep dinking around trying to find one little piece of something at a time. In my course, I also teach you the 10 steps it takes for a video to get more views. I mean, it doesn't matter what niche you're in. If you take those 10 steps with every single video, you will get more views and you will get more subscribers. Your channel will grow faster. I 100% guarantee it. If not, you just ask for your money back and I give you your, your money back. No questions asked. You just have to take the step. So stop wasting your life trying to figure stuff out on your own and uh, click that link right there or, or the one in the description below. Remember that we do color correction to make the image look like what you filmed and to make all of the clips in your timeline consistent. So I'm gonna do that with these last two clips. You don't have to watch. And then we're going to add a color grade. 
there is one more thing I do want to show you while we're in color correction. And that is sometimes you want to take the overall brightness of an image up or down. And a better way to do that than the brightness slider is to use curves. And I'll just click somewhere near the middle and just drag it down slightly because I wanted this image to be darker like this first image. So I'm just going to click right here and just drag that down a little bit. And the whole image comes down quite a bit in overall brightness. And over here, I'm going to add another beat and drag a little more there, just so it's a little more consistent with the other one. So far, our shots look like this, but the next step is going to make them even better and more cohesive. Sometimes you have a look that you're going for, you know what you want, and other times you need a little inspiration. To get that inspiration, there's a great website called Shot Deck. No, I'm not sponsored. I don't even have an affiliate link. I'm not even going to put the website down. You have to note it shotdeck.com. This is a website that filmmakers use to get inspiration for looks and feels and vibes. There's a bunch of ways you can search. There's also ways that you can find shots that you might want from a movie to borrow for your film, or maybe you want to borrow the way they staged it or the way they set up that coffee shop scene in a movie you like, and you don't know how to find it, you can come here. They've got thousands of movies with still images as references from them. So what we're going to use it for is to find a look for our sailing video. So I can jump up here to a search term and just type sailing. And then it shows us still images from a bunch of movies made out in the ocean. And there's a lot of cool looking stuff. Um, here's pirates. And let's go ahead and find one that I like. This one's kind of cool. Now we're not this dark. We're not silhouetted, but I like the blues and the oranges here. So I'm going to click on it and it gives me a ton of information. It shows us the full color palette, gives us a bunch of information here. And I can right click on this guy, save image as, and then just import it into my project, which I already have. Stick it at the end. Now I'm going to go to adjustment, drag this custom adjustment to the timeline. And that's so that I can add a look or a color or filter to this and it'll affect all of the clips. I don't have to do it all at once. With this highlighted, I jump up to adjustment and I select color match. It is a pro feature. And here I select the plus sign and I position my playhead over the image I want to match to. So here's the playhead. So it's gonna move it over to here. We're over that image that we want. I click OK, and now it's going to apply this look to this adjustment layer, and look at this. Look how much richer and bluer these images are compared to without adding this look. Now, if it's too much, I think, ah, oh, it's too much, I can take it down. If I want more, I can take it up. But it did a pretty great job at matching these colors to my video. And to see it without again, I'm just gonna turn off this little eyeball and hide that, and we can see, oh, without it, it looks like that. But with it, it looks like this, which I think looks pretty, pretty dang awesome. When you're done, you can just delete that reference clip from the timeline. By the way, you should know that you can also color match by just importing an image. You click color match and hit plus and you just hit local and then you can import an image that you want to use as your reference. And that is a way to color grade using the color palette of a movie that you like or are inspired by. Now we're going to do it one more way. I'm going to delete that adjustment layer. I'm going to jump over here to filters and there are a ton of filters allow you to add a look, a feel or vibe to your videos. And you know, we'll take blue hour and drag it down here, pull it all the way across. And now they look like this. They have this very blue feel, which can work depending on what you're going for. But let's say we want kind of something mysterious and film like we're not going to use blue hour. We're going to search for Hollywood's two favorite colors teal, which is a blue and orange. And look, it just pops up because they know teal and orange. And there is a filter called orange blue. Same thing. I'm going to take that guy, drag it to the timeline, make sure it fills up the entire timeline, covering all the clips. And now we have a very different look. It is a little bit too harsh. So we're going to take the strength down, but I kind of like it. What do you think? And if we play just a little bit of it, it looks like this. Oh, look at these beautiful waves and ocean and a little bit mysterious. And if we just had a little music and ambience, we'd get something that looks exactly like this. 